Hi everyone. In this video I want to introduce to you one of the most important techniques for approximating solutions in quantum mechanics and that's called the perturbation theory, time independent perturbation theory specifically. So the idea is that there's only a few particular systems where you can solve the Schrodinger equation exactly and here are some of them. These are probably some of the solutions to the Schrodinger equation that you're familiar with. The infinite square well, so the quantum harmonic oscillator, hydrogen atom, for example. The list of problems you can solve exactly is, is actually quite short. We're kind of running out of problems that you can solve exactly. So a practicing physicist needs to know how to be able to approximate solutions because for better or for worse, most of the systems that we address in the real world can't be solved exactly. The idea here is that suppose you encounter a potential v of x, which is kind of similar to one you can solve exactly, but with a modification or a slight difference. Call it a perturbation. So you think about something that you know how to do exactly, but you add a little perturbation, something different about it. So as an example, you might have so you might have something that looks like an infinite square well, but maybe the bottom is not completely flat. Maybe it has a slightly sloped bottom here, something like that. Or maybe, for example, you have something which is like V of X looks like the harmonic oscillator, but has like some kind of wiggle or some bump at the center. So this out here is proportional to X squared but then there's some kind of little bump in the middle. Looks a lot like the harmonic oscillator, but it has a little bit of a difference. Same thing here, looks a lot like the infinite square well, but has a little bit of a difference. We're gonna learn ways to approximate the solutions for these kinds of problems. So the idea goes like this. You're trying to solve the time independent Schrodinger equation, h hat psi n is equal to e n psi n. For some Hamiltonian, and you can't solve it exactly. Imagine that their Hamiltonian is not one of those special ones that we've solved exactly. It's some more realistic problem that you need to, uh, you need to approximate. But maybe this Hamiltonian looks like one that you know how to solve is equal to something called H0 plus H1. So the subscripts here are kind of confusing. These are not powers uh, of anything. These are just they're, they're as labels. So H0 is the piece I know how to solve, and H1 is the perturbation. We're going to call this the unperturbed Hamiltonian, and H1 will be the perturbation. So we are assuming we know how to solve this one. H0 psi n0 is equal to En0 psi n zero. So if I just had h zero and I didn't have this, I didn't have h one, I would be able to solve it exactly. But then I've got this little modification here which is screwing everything up. So we can solve this, but not the full Hamiltonian h hat psi n equals e n psi n. The idea is to assume that your wave function is going to be your unperturbed one plus a correction. And your energy levels are also going to be an unperturbed energy level plus a correction. So we're basically going to assume that uh, psi n is equal to psi n zero plus psi n, what we're going to call one for, for a perturbed wave function. This is like a correction. And the same thing for the energies. So these here are unperturbed, and these here are corrections. And it's worthwhile taking a moment to think about what you know. So we know, the idea is that we know the full Hamiltonian. We have the full Hamiltonian. And we can break it into two pieces, an unperturbed and a perturbed piece. So we know all of this. And we also know the unperturbed solutions. We can solve the Schrodinger equation exactly, so we know the unperturbed solutions. And what we are trying to find is what are these, the correction to the wave function and the correction to the energy levels. 
So the idea is to now plug this in to the Schrodinger equation. It must be equal to, again, the energy is going to be the unperturbed one plus the correction. And again, we're going to have here. So now we have uh, everything with a 0 is the unperturbed case. Everything with a 1 is the perturbation. And we want to know psi n1 and e n1. The whole idea with this is that this perturbation is small. It's a small modification of something that we know how to solve. So to keep track of this small parameter, I'm going to put uh, something called a bookkeeping parameter. I'm going to put a lambda in front of every perturbation. So here's a lambda. There's a lambda here. And there's a lambda here. Okay, so lambda is a bookkeeping parameter. It just keeps track of which quantities are small. So this is small. This is a small correction to the wave function. This is a small correction to the energy level. And we're trying to figure out those corrections. So what we're going to do now is we're going to expand this out. And we're going to do it to leading order. So we're only going to keep terms of order lambda and ignore terms of order lambda squared. So I expanded it out, and I neglected terms of order lambda squared. So I'm only keeping the leading order term. Okay. Now we. Assume we know how to solve this already. We know how to solve the zeroth order, the unperturbed wave function. So h hat 0 on psi n0 is going to be e n0 psi n0. Right? So we know this is equal to, if there's no perturbation, h0 psi 0 is e0 psi 0. And that's exactly going to cancel the thing on the left side. So this is going to cancel with that. Okay? Everything else we have is, has a lambda in it. And so we're going to have a single equation down at the bottom, which looks something like this. All right, so this is the equation for the corrections. It involves the corrected wave function and the corrected energy, h1. All right, so what we're going to do now is we're going to multiply on the left by psi m0. Okay, so the zeroth order uh, wave function, zeroth order state. Okay, so I just put the psi m0 on the left, and we have this now. And these uh, unperturbed states are going to be uh, orthogonal. So this will be equal to delta m n. Okay. Now, we can actually do some work with this one. This term here, um, h0, we know that if I act with h0 on psi n0, I get e n, right? 0, psi n0. The problem is, the way it's written is that uh, if it acts forward, it's not acting on the 0th order state. It's acting on the perturbation. But the good news is that h is Hermitian, right? We learned that. If I, if I want to act to the left, I act with the adjoint operator. But h is Hermitian, so I can act backwards on this, because the adjoint of h is also h. And so I can act backward, and I will get the energy em. So this term here is going to be em. When I act on the psi m backwards, em0, psi m0, psi n1. And you can see that is exactly the same as the one that shows up on the right side, except it has a different uh, coefficient out in front of it. So we can simplify this a little bit. OK. So remember what you know. We know the unperturbed states, so we know this. Um, we know psi m0, we know psi n0, and we know h, the whole h. Right? So we know all of this. And what we're trying to find is these corrections. So we'd like to know what is this, and we'd like to know what is this. So if e n is equal to m, I get the following thing. Psi n0, h hat 1, psi n0 is equal to e n 1. So this is a formula for the correction to the energy levels 
due to this perturbation. And the formula is very easy to use. I take the wave functions that I know if there's no perturbation, psi n zero, and I take the expectation value of the perturbed Hamiltonian, H1, in that state. Okay, so I take, I know all of this. I know that this is the perturbed Hamiltonian, so the little modification. These are the wave functions if there was no perturbation. Do this matrix element, do this expectation value, that gives me the corrections to the energy levels. So that's a super useful formula. So we will see how to use this with some applications in class. We want to see how to apply this to examples. I only gave you the correction to the energy level. I didn't explain how to get the corrections to the energy states or the wave functions. So we need to work out that. And then you might also be wondering, uh, you ignored terms that were quadratic in the perturbation. We only did this to leading order. So can I go beyond leading order? Can I include those terms which are order lambda squared? And the answer is yes, you can extend this. You can make it more and more accurate, and we will learn how to do that. All right, so I hope you're getting the main idea of this picture. You have a system which looks a lot like something which you can solve exactly, but with a tiny modification to it. We're figuring out what that modification does to the energy levels and to the energy eigenstates, or the wave functions. So here in this box is the formula for what the small correction is to the energy levels, and we can calculate this. And soon we'll learn how to find the corrections to the wave functions, and we'll learn how to go beyond leading order, so we'll learn how to systematically improve these approximations. Thanks you all for your attention. Thanks for listening. Bye for now.